Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. I, I've just got to say that that um, you know, I mean, I mean, you've got to be fair. You've got to be fair. And um, I real, I really believe this. I really believe atheism is intellectually dishonest. And I, and I really think that a lot of you atheists out there are being intellectually dishonest. I really, really do. Um, you know, you say, "Oh, Jay, you're, not, you're never going to convince us. Your 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 videos are going to convert more people to atheism, um, and uh, you know you don't understand atheism." But I'm sorry, but I've listened to atheists for two years, and most atheists that I've listened to are just not honest. You're just not honest. Because you say, well, we'll be convinced if you give us the evidence. Um, but what you do is you wait for the Christian to present evidence. And then you, in your own head, you knock it down. And then that's it. And then you think you can just sit there and say, right, no evidence has been provided. And yet your own position, you don't have to provide any evidence. You don't have to provide any arguments. So it's it's kind of like quite childish, really. It's quite it's kind of like I'm not going to play with you unless you play first. Unless you show me your arguments first, I'm not going to argue. That's the kind of mentality that you you really proper propounding. It's like childishness, really. But but more seriously, it's intellectually dishonest because you're not willing to put up your arguments you're not willing to put up your evidence you say oh well our, our position is that we don't have to do that you know our, our definition of atheism is we, we just are, we just don't have to do that and if you telling us we have to you just don't understand atheism no I understand atheism I understand that it's intellectually dishonest that's what I understand and you atheists out there are just not being intellectually honest and you, and the fact is, you're using your definition as a way of hiding from the intellectual questions and challenges that atheism has to answer. But you won't answer them. Because you know that you can't answer them. It's kind of like, um, you're in a room and you've done something wrong uh, in the classroom. You're two kids, two nine-year-old kids. And you've gone and smashed the window uh, with the football. It was you who did it. And your mate's there and you're there. Two lads. The teacher comes along. And you point the finger at your mate and say, it was him. He did it. And then you sit there and you just let that person get, get chastised. In a way, that's what you're doing. In a way, you're saying... Christianity is to blame. They've got to defend themselves against the accusation that they've got no evidence. And you point the finger at them. But yourself, you get off the hook. Because you are not willing to deal with the intellectual challenges and questions of our time. You're not, allowed, you're not willing to be challenged and questioned and intellectually rigorously, rigorously questioned. You will not engage in critical analysis of your own belief system. You hide behind a definition that in your own mind protects you from critical analysis, from your own belief system being criticised, from your own belief system being critically analysed. And that's a fact. That's a complete, hard, brute fact. You hold on to your definition of atheism like the Catholic Church holds on to dogma. Like it did in the Middle Ages. You hold on tenaciously to your definition of atheism. Because in a way you're frightened of actual proper intellectual rigorous questioning of your belief system. Most of you atheists, if not all of you atheists out there, I'd say most of you. Have never had proper critical analysis of your own belief system. Because you've always protected yourself and hid yourself in a little cocoon of your definition of atheism today. Your modern definition, where, number one, you've never established where that definition has come from. Nobody has shown me, not once, not once, 
has anybody shown me where that definition came from and number two not once has anybody given any intellectual arguments why that definition holds sway above other definitions of atheism but you hold on to it and you hide behind it I've even seen some of your top atheists who've made comments to me and I've seen them hide behind that definition I'm not going to believe because there is no evidence for Christianity I've won the day Jason I've won the day against you Christians we've had no evidence provided so therefore there is no God so you don't have to provide any evidence you don't have to provide any argumentation your belief system doesn't come under questioning no because you think that that definition sums it all up and it doesn't sum it all up it doesn't even begin to sum it all up it's basically using it to attack somebody else and are not willing to face up to the intellectual challenges that you have and it's completely intellectually dishonest it is completely intellectually dishonest it really is completely intellectually dishonest I remember once street preaching and an atheist came trained in the arts of Sam Harris trained in the arts of a Hitchens trained in the arts of a Daniel Dennett and they came along all right when I was street preaching and they started firing questions at me about the Bible so I answered them and they said there's no evidence for the Christian faith so I answered I said what about the resurrection and and I gave what about this what about that and I was given some evidence and as I was given the evidence the guy was critiquing and, and, and attacking that evidence and I'd given some more and all the time he was coming at me with different questions so I thought right I've, I've had, a, I've had a, a barrage of his questions I've answered his questions so then I said okay now listen you've asked me questions about my faith that we have no evidence and, I, and I've given you evidence I've given you the replies I've responded to every question that you've given me now you've asked me questions let me ask you some questions and then I began to turn into his atheism I began to question his atheism I began to show his atheism doesn't hold water and you know what he did he walked off because he couldn't cope with the analysis of his own belief system and the fact of the matter is atheist most of you atheists out there are frightened and scared of your own atheism being intellectually challenged you're frightened to death because you know for a fact that atheism when it's an analyzed and critically analyzed analyzed it's a complete and utter joke it doesn't hold water whatsoever there's nothing that it, it's so easy to demolish atheism it's so easy and when you present evidence to an atheist whatever that evidence is you are not open-minded to receive that evidence you will just question you will fudge you will dodge you are not interested in objective evidence but after that evidence has been provided then we get to an analysis of your beliefs and questioning your system you run like a rabbit you run like a rabbit you do not know how to stand and fight for your atheism and argue for your atheism because I tell you this any atheist whether it be Richard Carrier whether it be Sam Harris whether it be Daniel Dennett whether it be um, theoretical bullshit whether it be Thunderfoot whether it be a Ron Ra, if you bring them here and I begin to question their atheism and your atheism it will fall apart in five minutes that's how bad it is that's how easy it is to demolish atheism alright I'm sorry I'm very passionate atheism the, at the present time at this modern time with its modern definition definition is intellectually dishonest so I would say, Aronra, you're intellectually dishonest. Thunderfoot, you're intellectually dishonest. Sam Harris, you're intellectually dishonest. You're all intellectually dishonest. If you keep holding on to that definition, you need to widen that definition and you need to allow for critical analysis of your atheism within that definition. 
At the moment, you allow no critical analysis whatsoever on atheism. In fact, you're worse than the Catholic Church of the Middle Ages. You couldn't question the Catholic Church. But at least there were rebels within the Catholic Church. There were at least people who rebelled in the Catholic Church. You're, you hold on to your definition with an iron grip that is stronger than the Middle Ages Catholic Church. And you allow no critical analysis or questioning or challenging against atheism whatsoever. That is intellectually dishonest. You'll attack Christianity, you'll attack its evidence, but you allow absolutely, without any equivocation, no analysis, no critical questioning of atheism. That is intellectually dishonest and it's anti-intellectual and I am passionate about it, totally passionate. Don't give me your intellectual humbug and tell me that I'm not open-minded when you hold on to a definition like the Catholic Church did in the Middle Ages to dogma. Don't you ever do that, atheist. Don't you ever, ever do it. Don't you ever do it. There's one thing I can't stand is if intellectual hypocrisy. Don't you mock and attack me unless you are willing to have your belief system critiqued and questioned. And that is something you are psychologically, intellectually unable to do at this present time of history. God bless you. Love you all. I'm just passionate about it, folks. I can't help it, but I'm passionate about this lack of honesty amongst atheists at the present time. Take care.